Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our session number five of six from our virtual training series. This is on one of my favorite topics. I actually have a lot of favorite topics, but I love this one on data visualization. Um, we're going to be talking about giving you three tips to help you to make your presentations come alive. Um, sometimes we under estimate the importance of being able to do this. And so hopefully um, in this very quick session today, I'll give you some um, new ways to think about data visualization and some of the things that you may want to hone in on your own skills. Presentation skills are so critical in today's world, especially when we're doing more virtual based presentations. And whether it's internally or externally, we cannot undervalue the importance of using data visualization to really make our presentations come alive. So uh, for those of you who don't know us, um, I am Sue Nichols. I'm, from, I'm the president and owner of CMKG. We're a training company that really works closely with retailers, suppliers, and distributors, uh, primarily in North America. We focus on training and everything that we do, and we work with a lot of different brands and spaces. And so it really allows us to be, have a very holistic view of what's going on. Um, we're also collaborative training partners to our clients, the Category Management Association for anyone who's members there. So in uh, today's session, as well as the other virtual sessions, the opportunity is really twofold, is to first of all, experience a virtual training session. It's, a, it's not the same thing as a webinar. We've actually changed our, the names of our courses to virtual sessions because a webinar tends to be asynchronous, meaning that um, you just sit back and sip your coffee and listen to somebody talking at you. Um, but that's not really the intent of virtual training. If you are in virtual training and that's what it's like, that's not what it's supposed to be like. So um, understanding the opportunities for virtual training. And because this is a public session and we have people live streaming as well as in the Zoom meeting, um, you know, the opportunity is really for us to um, help you to understand a little bit more about what a virtual course looks like. Um, but you're also going to learn new stuff. I said we're going to be talking about um, data visualization today. Uh, you can turn on your camera. David is my stellar guy who uh, continues to turn on his camera. He's not camera shy. Um, and you do have the choice. Oh, there's Erskine. Hi, Erskine. Nice to see you. <laughs> Um, it's really nice when you're doing virtual sessions of any kind to turn your cameras on just because it does make it more um, personal and one of the biggest issues with virtual is getting engagement and so that really does help to create that. So in a typical virtual session, I would get everyone to turn their cameras on. Please stay muted. Um, we have you, uh, you guys are all muted right now. Um, if you need to pop in to say something, you can unmute yourself. Um, but otherwise, please stay muted and please participate. I'm going to get, ask you for a few pieces of feedback on some of the data viz that I'm going to be sharing with you today. So let's jump into things. Um, so a good data viz um, or visual needs to be have two elements in order to be effective. First is the design, which is the type, whether you choose a chart, an infographic, a map, a table. Um, you know, bullet points, smart art. So data viz is actually not just about data, it's um, non-data as well. So we actually have two courses related to data visualization. One is on data and one is on non-data viz because both are really important uh, to understand. But you need to think about the color and the visual appeal. And this is the art side of data viz. And then the second side is the contextual awareness, which is equally important. And that relates to the purpose of the visualization you're creating. Um, and based on that purpose of what you're trying to say, who your audience is and how you're presenting it. And this is a really important thing because a lot of the time we look at slides. I work a lot with different clients actually in the whole presentation skills area, which is a really massive um, topic to do training on and one that everybody can continually benefit from. But if you don't have a purpose to your slide, don't present it. Honestly, get rid of it. If you can't explain what you're trying to accomplish or explain in a slide besides throwing up a big table or a bunch of numbers or something, it's probably not worth your time to even put it in. 
Um, so I'm going to talk to you three ways to improve your data viz. One, focus on color. Two, create clarity. And three, choose the visual. Because we're only doing a quick session here, not going to get into too much detail, but it'll kind of get you some perspective on some of the things that you need to be thinking about. Like I just mentioned, data viz um, is a much broader topic of developing your presentation skills. We have a lot of courses online on this because there's so many different components to being effective um, presenting and all the way into like, you know, doing the virtual presentation skills piece. And so not only do you need PowerPoint, you need to be able to integrate data into your presentations for a fact-based approach. We hear about storytelling. You need to learn how to storyboard and storytell. You need to be thinking about strategic selling skills. And these things are important for any business practitioner. It's not just salespeople, category management, shopper, anyone who's developing presentations, whether they're for internal or external use, really need sound, solid uh, presentation skills. So let's take a look, focusing on color first. So if you didn't know, different colors represent different emotions to us, uh, from optimism, confidence, strength, and friendliness to defiance, fear, anxiety, and boredom. And sometimes using the wrong color in your slides can really um, make or break your presentation. Um, and, and sometimes we're also stuck with some colors because of the color of our, our, our corporate logo. Um, that drive, drives a lot of it because if you have a red logo, um, then you know red needs to be a color that's integrated into your slides, especially if you have your logo down in the left-hand corner like I do. Um, so red typically depicts negative urgency and passion. Green is positive, money, environmental. Yellow, optimism, happiness, and energy. Orange, energy, creative, and adventure. And blue is cool and water. Like in, in, and some of these are more prominent than others. Like, you know, red and green are obviously really big indicators. So if you're showing um, a positive number and you don't make it green, you make it purple, that's kind of weird. So sometimes we have to stick to some of the norms associated with picking that color instead of trying to be creative and make them different colors. Um, some other important ways to focus on color, use color gradients to show progressions. So if you have low to high, um, you can use a light blue all the way up to the darkest blue to show progressions from low to high or least to most. Um, use distinctive colors to complement or contrast against other colors for important data. And I'm going to show you examples of that. Um, use gray for less important or contextual data to be included, but not to stand out. So when you have your slides, you want to make sure that whatever it is that you're really trying to focus in on is the part that stands out the most. So if you have bright colors of column charts or pie charts, and all of them are different bright colors because that's the default setting in PowerPoint, might not be a good look. The other thing that's really important to think about is that if you do have the opportunity to um, have cost, like you're, you already have pre-built PowerPoint presentations given to you, um, you know, go in and change some of the colors and things so that those pieces that really stand out are the ones that are the most important things that are shouted out in a slide. Um, only color the variables in a chart, don't color the text, labels, or other marks unless it's very strategically colored. Too much color um, creates cognitive load and cognitive load makes it really hard for our brain to kind of bounce around and try to understand what it is we're looking at. And I'm going to show you an example of that in just a minute. And also strategically use color to time with the objective of your chart. And I'll show you an example of that as well. And these are just really simple things, but um, sometimes we really struggle with this or we pull up a slide and we um, uh, try to sit and explain it for 10 minutes instead of it being something that when I show you a slide that visually you can get it before I even finish explaining it to you. So an example of um, using color effectively um, is using day part data. So I want to show um, I have some really great day part data and what day, day part data is that it um, allows you to understand sales on an hourly basis throughout the day. Um, and this example, it's coffee and breakfast sandwiches. So you can see that 
um, at noon to six, um, six to eight, six to noon, 12 to six, and six a.m. or six p.m. to 12 p.m. Um, these are those um, results that happen in sales. And so pre some pretty compelling information here. And so the top one is the way that I would typically get this information um, when I pull the, inf the data. And so what I would like for you to do is look at these three options. And based on what I just shared with you, what color scheme would you use for the back fact, the stacked bars? Would you use answer A, uh, answer B, or answer C? So which one is most visually um, telling to you as it relates to, I wanna show you the importance of sales in the morning before noon with a comparison to afternoon for coffee and breakfast sandwiches. So you can either um, go into the Zoom controls and turn on annotate and just um, select a symbol that you wanna use or just circle um, whichever answer right on your screen and it's gonna show up on my screen or you can type your answers in the chat box if you feel more comfortable. Okay, I'm seeing lots of answers here. Okay, answer A is one that everybody is saying. Um, and so if, if my, my objective is just to show morning versus afternoon, answer A might not be as clear because it's a gradient that might interpret, you know, early in the day to late at night, but answer C um, can is a really effective one because it gets rid of some of the load because it shows yellow for morning and dark for afternoon. And so this is just an example of a way that you might want to be thinking about simplifying it so that morning and night. And so just makes it much easier to see what you're what you're seeing instead of having to differentiate and compare the times and that kind of thing. So now I can talk about the yellow morning and the um, darker afternoon and that there's an X percentage of sales are done um, before noon. Because these are some pretty, and they're, they, they're, they go very um, much hand in hand, the sales of coffee and the breakfast sandwiches. So that's just a simple example. So color is the first thing you should fix in your data visualizations. It really, really does sharpen and make your slides more crystal clear. If you're brightening the colors of the most important pieces, taking out some of the uh, color in the areas that you're not trying to reflect and making it as easy as possible for your audience to understand what you, they're supposed to be looking at. Second thing is improving your clarity. There's some simple principles to improve clarity. Um, first of all, reducing cognitive load. I talked about this a little bit uh, previously. This means the stuff that overloads your brain. So when you're creating um, graphs, clear the clutter, don't have in extra axis labels, axis lines, don't have lots of colors in, um, don't use colored text. Remove redundancy. Sometimes we have a title up at the top of the slide. The top of your slide should be the um, the title should, which sometimes take up, takes up like 25 to 30% of your slide, that should be the purpose of the slide. The biggest observation, it should not be category review market results or something like that. You should be interpreting and putting an insight up there. That's the most compelling thing from the table that you might show. So and also a lot of the time I'll see that the title up at the top is the same as the title in the chart. If it's the same, get rid of the one in the chart. You don't need it. You're already saying what it is up at the top. Um, you know, and if you have legends, but you can already um, interpret the legend because you're just showing percent growth or so those kind of things, get rid of some of that stuff. We really cling on to some of the defaults from PowerPoint. So we'll just insert chart, blah or it's what we get in our automated tool that we get um, that has updated PowerPoint presentations all the time. But your job can really be to go in and remove redundancy, make sure that the colors are right, make sure you're not doing repetitive titles, making sure that you're really focusing on in on the purpose of the presentation. Um, so reduce that cognitive load because it makes it a lot more difficult for people to interpret what you're doing. Um, don't group items too closely together. There's the gestalt prin principles that you either need some proximity between um, related things so that they're grouped together so that you can assume re relationship. Um, 
and or you need to have a uniform connectedness. So you like if you're trying to show an example, put a box around it or make that a different color or something like that so that you can really hone in. Because if, if this was a bunch of numbers, this purple one, and I'm talking about these numbers, but I'm not even pointing to them in any way, shape or form. I'm my mind, I'm scrambling around the screen trying to understand what you're talking about. And you've already made your point and you're on to the next slide and I'm going, like, I don't even know what you were trying to tell me there. So really important to think about how you space things out in your slide as well. Anticipate interpretation and proper order of data from smallest to largest or largest to smallest. Don't kind of put them in a weird order so that you, um, so, you know, you've got them kind of al alphabetically or something like that, if it doesn't make sense. Um, highlight the important stuff, bold your text, use color, uppercase text, um, and these should be used sparingly, but they can be used highly effectively if you do them well. Um, size of font can really make a big difference. You can de-emphasize what's not important by using light gray as your text and then having your black or some kind of color as the stuff you really want to emphasize. Um, and add in icons or pictures. They're um, my favorite one, and I don't have it down written down here, but it's called The Noun Project. And they have the most amazing icons and they're free. And um, so if you do a search on the noun project, you will be able to go in there and find some phenomenal icons. Um, they ask you to, and it's super cheap to be a monthly member, but they have icons um, for everything. Like it's pretty shocking. And I, and I have comments from people, where do you get those icons? And it's from the noun project. You'll be impressed. I have people who are like, wow, from everything I learned from you, my favorite thing is the noun project. I guess that's probably a slam to me, but I won't take it personally. Um, also using those common norms, like I talked about before, axes starting at zero, do not, if you are changing your axis to not be at zero and you're starting at 20% or something like that, you have to highlight that because sometimes we are very, it can be very misleading. There's nothing more frustrating than when people are looking at data and it's actually misleading and you're making things look bigger or smaller than they are because especially as salespeople, we might be trying to make things look more positive or whatever than they actually are. Um, Make sure you use red as negative and green as positive. Timelines go from left to right. Higher values or above lower values don't go the other way unless once again, it's for a reason and you're really explaining it because it's for a specific purpose. Um, so don't try to um, you know, mess around with some of the common norms or you can end up having misinterpretation of what you're doing. So, you know, I work with a lot of clients and um, I, uh, I've asked students to share with me their favorite slides. And so this is one of the favorite slides from one of our clients. And this is in a category and they receive this data uh, on a monthly basis for their category. And so this is actually a slide that they present to their customers uh, about their category. And so when I look at this and I um, talk about the increased penetration, so you can see in this, in this chart, in this slide, that there's increased penetration along with the higher buying rate. And that's really what's driven category sales for us in this category. So how many of you can see what I'm talking about? <laughs> there's four charts on here with a lot of data. There's information on penetration, but also on buying rate, frequency, and purchase size. I didn't talk about those things. So why are they in the slide? And so we need to be selective about what we're showing because if all I wanna show is that increased penetration along with higher buying rate have driven category sales, why am I showing the other stuff? It cognitive load, way too much information on the slide a lot of irrelevant information. And as a you as a viewer, you guys can probably be going, I still can't see what you're talking about. And this was literally, so they had the right idea because they had the, um, the purpose of the slide up at the top, but they didn't clean up. And so the cognitive load in here is so high. So I've already explained this to you and I'm on to my next slide and you're going, I don't even, I didn't see it. I'm sorry, but I didn't see it. So. Um, you know, some of the ways that you can improve a slide like this and these, you know, it becomes a struggle because 
Um, there's a lot of AI and machine learning that's starting to go into some of the presentations if you're working for larger companies. So these are beautiful and they're a really great way to drill down to find the information quickly that you're looking for. But we have the brain. And so my attitude is we as Catman practitioners, salespeople, um, uh, shopper insights, trade marketing, whatever we are, we have the responsibility of using our brains and updating these kind of slides so that they are relevant for the purpose of what we are presenting and that we're not being lazy and just taking these auto-generated presentations and going out and presenting them, or, or this is the kind of stuff we're gonna get, and I don't see anything compelling here. I can't even see what the heck you're talking about. So the ways that I improved this slide, I cleaned it up slightly um, to show that um, penetration and buying rate um, in the premium segment are growing. And so I'm actually showing the growth numbers instead of the actual comparison. When I go back to this slide, you can see that I'm showing this year, year ago and current. That's really hard to compare, especially because you can barely see what it is. So then I have to go do the math um, because there's not that much visual because these charts are so small as well. So by changing it to point changes and dollar change, I can really quickly show, I, I've already talked to them that the category sales are up for like 5%. Now I can show that it's being driven by the premium segment, which is up 3.4 points and the buying rate is up 1.67. And then I put in an arrow um, to show that that's kind of what they should be looking at. So much easier way for them to see that, wow, it really is the premium because it, and this is where you can explain things like penetration times buying rate equals your dollars and so these are the kind of things um it, for anyone who was in my shopper um, course last week and i'm also talking more about shopper tomorrow there's a lot of companies who are not thinking about category sales and how penetration and buying rate drive results and that's one of the most important things like we have scorecards, but sometimes we're not scorecarding the shopper, we're only scorecarding our, our volume metrics. And so by looking at these kind of things, we're able to dissect and understand what's happening with the shopper and their behavior, which is so paramount this year uh, because of what happened last year with the pandemic and as we continue to navigate out of the pandemic. The last thing is to choose the right visual. So first of all, you need to pick the right chart based on your chart purpose. And there's a lot of different charts. Um, I'm not gonna go into details about it right now, but you know, pie charts are the most overused chart in business. Pie charts should be only used for five slices of pie or less. You shouldn't have two pies comparing side by side. Very visually hard to look back and forth between pies showing this year and last year. And you're going, okay, what happened with the brand share here and here and here? And versus if you just had it in a column chart or a bar chart. So those kind of things. So very strategically choose your right chart. Um, realize it's not always a chart that's the best option. So sometimes a table is a text may be much more effective and easier for people to remember that, wow, 28% of the um, American population is millennials um, or whatever it is and making it stand out so that that's gonna be much more memorable for somebody than um, showing a chart that shows millennials versus Gen Z versus whatever. Once again, related to your uh, presentation. So if your purpose is to talk specifically about millennials, well, this might be a really great way to do it instead of actually um, putting in a chart. Other, also tables. So tables, if you don't know PowerPoint, you can actually turn your table into something that um, becomes much more uh, storytelling capability for visual or if you're up on a large screen. So I can talk about the category and how it's grown um, up $5.9 million, which is 2%. I can talk about premium. And in this case, premium is actually down. Um, and if I look at mid, you can see that mid is actually driving overall growth in the category and that value is flat. So this is a really great way to be stopped telling a story is by not having everything on the screen at the same time. And this plays into understanding how to break down a table so you can do this and also using PowerPoint with animation, which I'm not gonna get into, but animation, I use it everywhere all the time because it allows me to control what I'm presenting as I'm presenting it. Instead of everything just showing to me static on the slide, it's more boring, 
harder for me to guide where my audience's eye should be. And so they can follow along with the story a lot more easily if I'm using that animation piece. And I don't mean having things dancing on the screen and that kind of stuff, just some simple animation to, to have logic and flow as I'm going through and explaining things. Remember to keep it simple. Um, if I go, if you know, there's so many times because I'm in a lot of presentations with our students that um, they'll put together uh, or, or they'll share presentations with me. And if I don't understand a slide, um, A, it's probably too complicated because I think I'm relatively smart. You don't want to make things so complicated that your audience is like, oh my gosh, I have no idea what they mean. So I'm going to pretend I know because I don't want to be the dumb one in the room. Not, might not even ask about it. So don't make it some super complex slide unless you're dealing with like data scientists or something that that you're going to not be assuming that they understand everything you know when i'm talking about penetration and um buying rates and those kind of things if you're not sure if they know about it make sure that you explain a little bit about what it means instead of jumping in and just talking about the numbers and showing them the numbers and going deep into some panel data and perhaps they don't understand it. So by, um, you don't wanna make it too simple, but you don't wanna go complex. And you wanna make sure that you also, if you're in a virtual session, that you're actually clarifying with them along the way, if they understand what you mean, if they have any questions, do you guys understand what I mean when I'm talking about penetration and buying rate, those kind of things. In the virtual space, we are, um, so many people are so reliant on their PowerPoint and they stop to check, they forget to stop to check in with their audience. And that can be a really big problem because if you start losing them and you've got this great idea in mind, but they don't understand some of the data that you're presenting, then they're, they might say no um, to a really good idea. So in summary, data is very important part of presentation skills, um, but you have to master a lot of different components. You need to be strong at PowerPoint. You need to be understand how to create um, great stories. And that can be done through storyboarding, which is a skill that can really help you before you go jump into PowerPoint that you plan out your presentation in a one page format to kind of force you to, and especially if you work with a team of people putting together a presentation and it goes back and forth and back and forth. And then somebody dumps in eight more slides and then it goes back and forth again. And then you're destroying the PowerPoint format that was laid out and you're ending up becoming the practitioner of fixing PowerPoint instead of actually focusing on the presentation. So storyboarding can really help with that. Adding in data, how do you create fact-based presentations and incorporate data in there? Um, and also writing virtual presentations. And so we do have courses on all of these in our learning portal. Um, and we also do offer the virtual training in these areas as well. And it is one of the areas that's fun. Um, we create super engaging using your content and your information um, in order to be able to create some really fun virtual sessions. And the, the really great thing is, is that, um, they are cost effective, they are quick, they're, it's not a full day thing, it's a couple of hours and you can get a lot of really great information and insights from it. So in terms of next steps, we'll be sending you an email like we have with the other virtual sessions um, with our resource book. So you have, an ac you have access to a link for uh, the information in this specific course. Um, I'll also be sending you um, the link to our instructor-led virtual training. If you're interested in learning more about that, you're also welcome to contact me at my email down in the bottom left-hand corner there. And finally, um, you can also purchase an annual subscription. So if you're here on your own and you're just a, you're an individual and you're just looking for some additional training, a lot of the courses that I talk to you about are available with an annual subscription. It's like $249 a year US, so it's a very valuable um, uh, and, and cost-effective way to access some great training. Um, so I'm going to stay on the line to see if there's any more questions. Um, tomorrow is our last session, and that's on four ways to create better shopper insights. So I hope you got some great learning out of today's session. Um, we will be sending out the email by the end of the day today, uh, and so that you can access some of the resources. And um, I'm going to stay on the line just to see if anyone has any questions for me. Thank you very much for coming. And uh, if you
if you're taking off, um, thank you very much for uh, spending a few minutes this morning um, enlarging your knowledge and, and enhancing your capabilities. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.